Hello everyone, this is Ivan Castro and I'm going to present you the progress in the last year uh, of my thesis, Aerolastic Analysis of Kites Applied to Urban Wind Energy Systems. So let us quickly review the concept of urban wind energy systems. So this is a novel technique to harvest energy from high altitude wind. It is normally composed of tether flying machines and there exist many different concepts. So the two main ones are on the right. Uh, ground gen systems where we uh, pull the tether to move a generator on ground and produce the, the power. And the fly gen systems where uh, instead we move the, the wind turbines on board. The activities uh, developed by the AWE group at UC3M are basically divided into two groups. The one of software on the left, where we have flight simulators and uh, aerodynamic and aerolastic tools, which I called the World Package 1, and this is the focus of my thesis. So basically the result of these tools are going to be the, the theoretical aerodynamic uh, coefficients, force and moment coefficients. And on the right, we have the experimental part, where we have an estimator, an extended Kalman filter, with the avionics uh, on board and also with some sensors uh, on the ground. And we have World Package 2, the ground-based control system. That is the focus of Francisco de los Rios' uh, thesis. And, well, uh, for my thesis, we are interested in the, in the, uh, in the aerodynamic models coming from both uh, packages. We make a comparison and then we try to couple this uh, aerodynamic model with a flight simulator. The main objective in the end is to, to be able to obtain high fidelity flight simulator. And this is useful, uh, for example, for predicting the, the power production and the performance of these kind of systems. And also uh, the, the second objective of the group of, or one of them is uh, uh, to, to create, to generate a small scale AWE machine. So just to put bounds into my thesis, this would be my thesis. So basically the software package and the comparison between both of them. So just a small recap of the potential flow results that we, that we obtained last year. And I'm reviewing this because we are using part of this methodology in the, in the progress of the new year. So basically, uh, we get our experimental setup, which is composed of the avionics on board the, the kite and also some on ground sensors. We get the raw measurements. And then we feed these measurements to an extended Kalman filter. And from the extended Kalman filter, we can get estimated values of uh, our dynamic variables, such as the angle of attack, the side slip, velocity, and angular rates of the body with respect to the wind, but also we can get the experimental aerodynamic coefficient. So with estimated values, we can fit our in-house uh, aerodynamic tool on PAM, which is a panel method, so based on potential flow in the end, and we can get our theoretical aerodynamic coefficient and then compare. And this was the focus of last year. These were the results. For the lift coefficient versus the angle of attack, drag coefficient versus the angle of attack, and pitch moment coefficient versus the angle of attack. So we see that the lift, okay, so there was a good match between the theoretical and pump and the experimental values. So it was at least centered. And for the drag coefficient, we saw that we were missing some terms here. Piscus and some others, perhaps, that we will see. And for the pitch uh, moment coefficient, we see that the, the general trend was not followed, but the magnitudes at least were maintained. So the, the final conclusion was, okay, we have to add something for the drag and something for the pitch probably. But what we see in all of them is that they all have hysteresis. What do I mean by hysteresis? That if we pick up an angle of attack, for example, of 30 degrees, 
we get different values of the coefficients depending on the way we are following. And this is experienced by the three longitudinal coefficients, as we see here. With the purpose of uh, checking if this hysteresis was a coincidence of uh, those figures of faith, we checked other figures of faith. And, and in this case, we are showing a one and a half figure of faith. We start with the blue one, we do a semi figure of faith, and then we join with the with the red one and finally the third semi figure of eight with the yellow one and we check that the three of them experience uh, hysteresis so they close themselves in the three uh, longitudinal coefficients we observe that uh, for every figure of eight complete figure of eight we got two hysteretic loops that's why we split into two halves every figure of eight and by checking the, the literature, we realized that this behavior, this hysteretic behavior, was typical of the dynamic stall phenomenon that we'll see in a moment what it is. And that there was a clear research gap in the literature regarding the AWE community about these uh, evidences. And then looking into the physical interpretation of, of this phenomenon, we found the, the following. So we plot again the same 3D trajectory and we are focusing uh, in this slide only on the on the blue part. And we analyzed two legs of this uh, semi field of it. The turning leg first and then the straight leg. Notice that in the turning leg the kite is flying slower with respect to the ground and in the straight leg it's uh, the velocity is high. Then we plot the angle of attack uh, along the time. We see that there is uh, a periodic uh, shape of the angle of attack that varies from 20 to 40, roughly, which is a lot. And then we try to explain this physically. So for the kite following this uh, dash trajectory, we will have the velocity of the kite, that for the turning part, for the turning leg, is going to be smaller then we will have the incoming wind that uh, for both cases are is constant and then the, the aerodynamic velocity is computed with the subtraction of both, both vectors and then we get the angle of attack between the aerodynamic velocity and the the body axis the uh, x body axis that we define it in the spine of the kite we see that here the angle of attack is high here, since the velocity of the kite is bigger, the angle of attack is small. And this is what explains uh, this periodic uh, behavior of the angle of attack in a semi figure of eight. And then this periodic uh, changes in the angle of attack is what causes the dynamic stall in the kites. Then we can define the research goals of the past year. So basically understanding and modeling the phenomenology associated to the dynamic stall in the flight of AWE kites and as always by combining experiments and simulations. Let's start with the potential flow plus dynamic stall modeling. Now a quick explanation on the dynamic stall. So uh, basically it is experienced by uh, winds or airfoils subject to periodic uh, motions, in pitching or plunging normally. The main characteristics are, are that uh, the stall is delayed with respect to the typical static stall. And also, there is a leading edge vortex that is created in the leading edge and then advected uh, down the cord until it is shed. So, basically, in the end, what we get is this uh, hysteretic. Uh, behavior in the in the force coefficients I mean the also in the moment in the pitch moment coefficient. Our model is trying to capture all these effects of these phenomenological effects. So first by using the unsteady 3D potential flow that we had on pump. We input the kinematics here 
and then we get the potential coefficients, potential flow coefficients. And then uh, we use a semi-empirical dynamic storm model due to Leishman and Bedoes that basically uses uh, three ordinary differential equations to model the, the delay in the effective angle of attack, the delay in the trailing edge separation, and the leading edge vortex shedding through this process. It basically does transformations to these uh, co potential flow coefficients in order to finally get the space part, which are the six force coefficients taking into account not only potential flow, but also these dynamic stop blocks. And it is semi-empirical because uh, the model must be fed by static coefficients and by dynamic coefficients coming from the experiment. So in total, we get around five free parameters to fine-tune in order to make the theory match the, the experiments. Then for the fine-tuning of the empirical free parameters, we proposed an optimization with the objective of minimizing uh, this cost function, uh, which uh, sums all the Euclidean distances uh, between the experimental points and the numerical points. So in the end, the objective is to minimize all these distances to to make both curves match. And now let's see quickly the results. So these are again the three longitudinal coefficients, the lift, drag, and pitch moment. But now we are showing the experimental ones for a semi-figure of eight. Uh, also in red the 3D potential flow, so un pam alone, and then the dynamic stall model, which combines un pam with the dynamic stall blocks in yellow. So we see that for the CL, the match is, uh, is quite good. For the CD, we improved a lot. We still don't catch the whole hysteresis, but we improved a lot. And for the pitch moving coefficient, we see that the trends at least start uh, being similar. And the most important characteristic of this method, apart from the accuracy, is the low computational cost that it has. It's super low. And now let's review the, the conclusions and future works for the next year. So along the past year, we obtained experimental evidence of the dynamic stall phenomenology, and it was the first time that it was spotted in the, in the AWE community. Also, uh, we proposed and we, we have ready a, a potential flow plus dynamic stall model, aerodynamic model, which is accurate and low cost. So it's perfect to be coupled with a flight simulator. And as future works, we are started, uh, starting uh, doing our steady runs by using SU2, which is a, an open source software for CFD. We are starting with, uh, with 2D sections of the kite and then we will tackle the 3D shape by imposing uh, a pitching motion of the kite to see the floor structures and, and to also check the aerodynamic coefficients. And as the next step of my thesis, uh, we will tackle uh, the elastic problem by adding elasticity to, to the structure. And let us uh, finally review the research achievements of the past year. So the main activities uh, plus those uh, developed during my research stay at TU Delft with Professor Roland Schmel were the following. Uh, we managed to publish a, a paper on the potential flow theory applied to the, to the Delta Kite. And then we submitted uh, three abstracts for the AWEC conference. Uh, one of them, I will be the presenter, and in two of them, uh, I am second author. Uh, this was a collaboration that I started in, in at TU Delft, and uh, now it has led to, to a paper that is now in, in review. 
And finally, as side activities, uh, I'm also developing a elastic method for nonlinear flux. And Raúl and, and I uh, send a paper to a to a conference a conference that is now happening in Madrid. And finally, uh, another milestone that I would like to remark is uh, that I participated in the Flyer Thesis program organized by ISA uh, by doing a parabolic flight campaign. So thank you very much for your attention. And I would like to, to be in person to uh, answer all your questions, but since it hasn't been possible, I leave you here my contact. So this is my office in the EPS of Leganes, and this is my email. So please contact me if you have any doubts.